This episode of DOD TV is brought to you by the new specially designed, lightweight and durable Tenzing Hangtime Day Pack. Go further, hunt longer, Tenzing. You know, deer hunting is a 365 day a year process for us. And it probably is for you as well. If you're not doing something out in the field, you're consuming information about how to do it, how to make your spot better. And that's the way we always try to show you or showcase what we do on the farms is something that we've learned that's helped make our lives easier, the deer lives easier, and we try to be informative. That's what we're gonna do with deer season 23. We're starting it right now here in the off season because there really is no off season. I'll borrow Analogic's tagline for that. There's always something to be done, always something you can do to improve the habitat, improve the health of your herd, and perhaps learn something along the way. So as we go through deer season 23, we're going to take you out into the farms to show you some of the things we do in the off season to make those farms better and ultimately our hunting process better. We're also going to drift back to fall of 22 and bring to you some of the best hunts we had from last fall. We're going to do this in a weekly basis here during the winter. That will eventually lead us into turkey season 23 and then once we get into the summer then the projects never stop so we're going to have a lot of stuff coming to you in as quick a fashion as we possibly can as we continue down this path of semi-live production from Drury Outdoors hopefully you enjoy this one it's a fun one we're going to do some trapping with Perry we're going to go to Alberta with Corey Wade and Jared we're also going to go to Utah for some encounters there with Josh Taylor and Austin so get ready, deer season 23 starts right now. All right, we're going into a predator piece with Perry and Wade. They're both very, very good at catching raccoons, coyotes, uh, foxes, bobcats, possums, skunks, you name it. And really the two main targets are raccoons and coyotes. Those are the ones we want to clean up. The raccoons, because of the nest predation when it comes to wild turkeys, quail, pheasants, and of course, coyotes when it comes to uh, fawn recruitment. Both of those things, nest predation and fawn recruitment, we've seen drop over the last 10 to 15 years. And since we've started to hone in on and focus in on that predation problem, we've started to see more fawns, more baby turkeys. We're doing our part to try and balance the ecosystem out there. Because right now, in from what we see, it's out of balance. The raccoon pictures we see on our reconics cameras, see what you've been missing. Well, it's incredible how many raccoons are out there on the farms. The same with the coyotes. I've never seen so many coyote pictures as I have this year. Wade and Perry have been uh, hunting them. They've been trapping them. We're trying to do everything we can to balance that overall uh, population out and help the game species that we're after. So as you guys just heard Mark talk about, Wade and I spent a lot of time this off season doing a lot of trapping and uh, helping out those fawns and those poults. And uh, trapping season's closed here in Iowa now, but we uh, filmed a lot of tips and tricks and videos on cell phones back in December while we were running in Iowa. We've now moved to Missouri because it is still open. Hopefully you guys find these tips and tricks helpful on your farm and you guys can apply them next season. So we just caught a coon in this trap, so we're gonna do a quick remake. And uh, you can probably see behind me some cattails. There's a pond right here, and there's a run that goes across that they're using on the bank of this pond, which is a really good spot. And uh, on dog-proof trap, it's just a single lever that flips down to a dog that's inside the dog proof, meaning that a pet or a coyote cannot stick his paw in there and get caught. It's only an upward lever trap. So I just take two hands, pinch it down, grab the dog and then hook it to the lever and i set my levers about midway you can set them all the way deep to where they got to pull them a lot i like to set them midway so that they they're a little hair my drive chain is in the ground and uh we just killed a coon here so there's a kill circle i always like to go in a different spot this trap yesterday was uh, right here in the kill circle. So I always like to go to a different spot, different scent for them, hopefully. And I like my trap really firm to the ground so when they go to stick their paw in there, there's no play, there's no movement. You can turn them a little bit, they'll get real solid. And I always take this extra grass and cover my chain up.
pretty simple to bait them. I just go to Walmart or somewhere, grocery store, buy a jug of juice or whatever you may be, milk jug. And then this is cat food with a little bit of catfish fishing oil soaked in it. And uh, gives off a really good smell and they really like it. Put a, put a little bit in there. And I always find a stick close by. Here's one. Don't use your hands so you don't get caught. And I just take that stick, work that cat food below the lever inside the trap. Kind of pack it down a little bit so that it's tight and about level with the lever inside the trap so that they got to work a little bit to get the uh, bait out, which in result gets them caught. So since we've been running these dog crews, the mice will get in there and steal your bait. And so something I watched a video on online and learned is you take an orange slice, like a candy orange slice, and they're real sticky. And you take that on each side of the lever inside the trap, drop them in there and take your stick and get them to stick to the lever itself or the bottom of the trap. That way, if a mouse gets in here and steals all your cat food, you still have that bait for the coon if he comes along. So I get that stuck to the bottom of the trap. Then I take the cat food, <clears throat> kind of put a, put a little bit on top. Take your stick and I still pack that down in there so that you have a base, a layer, right underneath the lever inside the trap. So that when the coon takes his hand, he goes in, tries to scoop the bait up, that lever hits him, and then he's handcuffed right here on top. So I'm running probably, I think 22, 24 traps, and they're in multiple locations. And a lot of spots right here, like off the road, you can see the trap, you can get to it quickly, but multiple locations with multiple traps gives you a bigger line and a bigger spread of your opportunity to catch these coons, possums, skunks, any nest predator that's out there. So deer season's over. Wade and I are taking our part in getting rid of these nest predators, whether it's coons, possums, skunks. We're out here to help the turkeys and everything that needs help wildlife wise. We're running trap lines, a lot of dog proofs, got a few coyote sets out, but we're doing our part to clean up some of these farms because we see the trail cam pictures and we know how many are out there. So we're uh, taking our time to get rid of them. Today was one of the best days I've ever had. It'll be hard to top this one. Get ahead of your game with a 14-day deer cast prediction, mapping, radar, wind check, rain station, path tracking, and more. Prep, predict, and pursue with DeerCast. Hopefully you guys enjoyed those tips on trapping, and uh, hopefully we see the results with those poults and those fawns and everything that benefits from getting those nest predators out of the way. And uh, now we're gonna jump back to some cool hunts. Back in September, going to Alberta, going to Utah. Hopefully you guys enjoy. All right, we have been waiting for this since it ended last year. This season, I'm kicking my season off. It's different, it's mule deer. Um, up at Wild Country again, so we're back. Last year, we were in the elk woods, just had an epic hunt. And uh, this year, we are going to be after mule deer. They're in full velvet, so they're absolutely beautiful. Um, but I just cannot wait. Austin, my husband, is guiding me. And uh, obviously I got the Matthews Prima on hand. I have been shooting a lot. I mean, every evening, have not missed an evening. I've worked really hard this summer 
just on accuracy, trying to get my groups as consistent as I can and shooting further. But anyways, it's just been a fun summer shooting. There is just so many beautiful mature bucks uh, up at Wild Country. I'm just ready. We're going up Sunday and here we go. We have arrived. We are at the ranch. It feels absolutely beautiful right now. We're in short sleeves. Gosh, I bet it's like 70 degrees sunny. Um, but first evening, it is Sunday. So hunt starts tomorrow, early in the morning. Um, but we are gonna go spend the evening somewhere pretty, probably up top on a ridge. We're gonna do some scouting. We're gonna do some shooting. Let's go. Well, the time is finally here. I've been practicing with the Matthews Prima all summer long as much as I can, getting in as many reps as I can for this hunt, and I just can't believe it. The time flew by. Josh flew out from the Midwest to film me. Austin, my husband, is guiding me, and we just can't wait for a fun week. Uh, we're kind of looking at deer cast, looking at the weather. It's looking like it's gonna be a little warm, so we may have even more of a challenge uh, there for us, but we're just excited to see these animals with our own eyes and see uh, how many times, if any, we can get in range of a beautiful, wild Utah mule deer. Day number one, morning number one of my Utah mule deer hunt. The anticipation is high. That alarm went off, flew out of bed, got the scent lock on, and off we went. And Austin was like, all right, we are going to a high point where we can see a lot of ground. That's the thing in the mountains is it's not like the Midwest where you're staying down low. Now we're going up top. So we're getting those loopholes out and we're going to put our eyes to work to see what we can locate. So we've gotten a bunch of rain this summer and everything has been really green but the last week or so it's finally starting to dry up so they're going from they've been eating all the forbs and and different things low on the ground to now they're kind of transitioning all these sarvis berries um, the bitter brush the buck brush snowberries they're starting to transition to that to where they're browsing a little higher all that stuff is starting to ripen and the fruits are starting to come off of that All right, day number two, we are back to our spot that we were at yesterday morning on that high point. We had the loopholes out, all three of us, and Austin spotted a buck that he has been watching all summer long, has a ton of velvet footage of him named WB. So the second he spots him, he's like, come look in, <laughs> look in my loopholes. Josh and I get a great look and we're like, what a deer. And Austin said, hey, it's time to switch positions. Let's actually go get a little bit higher and a different view from him and see if we can watch him go to bed and then make a play. down underneath that service berry. Yeah. And it looks like the wind, when we did the wind. Ooh. <laughs> it's just kind of settled right now, so Still. we just need it to pick up. It's supposedly it gonna went. go at like one o'clock. It's supposed to pick up west, northwest, which will be blowing like this direction. Okay. And I feel like we can slip up exit out of this. See these trails right through here? Mm-hmm. Feel like so you're we starting in front like, of him. Well, so he's bedded looking this way. Oh, okay. I feel like we can get on some of these trails and maybe get into the shade of these sarvis berries. This one's 25, this one's 32. Well, we have a plan set in place. So we got eyes on this buck. He's bedded. Uh, per Austin, he's bedded in a really solid spot, so. Let's get that wind rolling. Yeah, we, we need some wind. We've been looking at deer cast. It's pretty much just still um, until a few hours from now. So that's honestly most important that that wind kicks up. So it's at least in our face and we got some noise and some movement going on. So we shall see.
about 180 yards out. Now, here's the thing about the mountains. It takes a lot longer to get to the spot that you're wanting to go to when you're in the mountains versus in the Midwest. So we're hoping that with this forecast we've been handed, you know, it's on mother nature, but we're dealing with no wind and really, really warm temperatures. So we're trying to get over towards WB where he bedded as quickly as we can and just hope that by the time we stalk all the way in there that he has stayed under that same Sarvisbury tree. Dog. We just got too close. We didn't know exactly where he was, and we got finally picked up tips at 27. That was an incredible stalk. I mean, we started down there below, low. I mean, we made our plan. The wind picked up, started low, we stalked all the way up, got into here, and unfortunately, I mean, it was awesome, but unfortunately, by the time that we saw the tips of his antlers, he was 27. Nice work, team. Close, close, close. <laughs> So the morning of day three, I keep talking about the wind and going back to that subject, but it was our main talking point within the truck that week. You know, I mean, you're in the mountains, you're, you are dealing with warmer temperatures, which isn't super uncommon for early season. The deer are used to it. But when you have wind speeds that are under five and 10 mile an hour, it's really, really hard, especially you got three people. You know, you have me as the hunter, you got Austin as the guide, and you got Josh as the camera guy. So you got six feet, that are trying to get through sage and trying to get within 35 to 40 yards of a live deer. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's not as easy as it may seem, but we tried and tried and tried. So we're fighting no wind there in Utah, just wishing that we'd get any type of speed. And Wade and Jared had arrived in Alberta for their hunt. And on day one, I mean, they go into these crazy winds over 20 mile per hour, but we were like, man, it's crazy how same type of hunt, but two totally different places with two totally different weather forecasts. Corey, we're coming for you, big guy. Corey Jarvis. What's up, man? You made it. Long time no see, buddy. Another trip up north, eh? God, I missed you. Hey, Wade. How's it going, Corey? How you doing? See ya. You too. Yeah. Good times, man. Good to see ya. Ready to rock and roll in the heat. Yes. Cooking up here, man. It is warm. It feels like uh, we never left Iowa. It's been said before, and I'll say it again. Practice like you play. We literally just got here, said our hellos, hadn't seen Corey in a while, Tyler in a while, and we got the Matthews out of the cases, put the relay sights on, shoot at 20, 40, 50, 60, 60, 50, 40, and you'd be ready to go in the morning. We're hitting right where we need to, we got a 15 mile an hour crosswind, a winch to the right, so we'll take it. Shoot, 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 and shoot some more. It's kind of like punters punt, kickers kick, quarterbacks throw, archers should shoot daily. September the 1st, hopefully it's a September to remember, we've got a 15 mile an hour southwest wind. It's gonna be a little warm today, but we're not as much worried about that as wind makes all the difference with these muleys. So we're gonna to try to take advantage of the wind, find one early, stick to him like glue, figure out if he'll bed in a good spot, and then make a stalk on him. Wish us luck. Got the Tacticamp viewer on our spotter. The wind we needed today is here. These deer are bedded, not in the stockable spot right now, but we're gonna stick to them like glue today and, uh, and see if we can make a play on them.
super excited. Wind is perfect, right? It's in our face 25 miles an hour. Deer bedded on this side hill. We're gonna try to get somewhere between 40 and 50. I've made that windy 50 yard shot before as I'm going on my first stock since 2016, because I haven't been here since 2016. All of those emotions are coming rushing back and uh, trying to remember all the things we've learned and see if I can employ it in this first stock of 2022. in the wind. So we're on our way to them and another group joined them, got them up from where they were and now they're several hundred yards further away, not there. We're gonna just sit here, be patient, see what happens with them, but he's a, he's a really big deer and there's another decent sized deer in that group. So fun stuff out here on the wind farm and the bald prairie of Southern Alberta. What? Huh? They bedded right there? mule deer here. We got to within 50 in this wide open prairie. It started to get real when we were at 120 and then 90, 80, we scooted to 50 and uh, here in the moment of truth, like it's going to happen and I hit him a little back. I don't know exactly where back. We're going to review the footage, compare and contrast to the deer cast track and figure out any plan. Um, but I'm fairly certain we'll get this deer. It's just, we have to just like getting into this position, you've got to employ the right tactics to make sure then we recover that deer that we hit. It's a dead deer, it's just the 
it will depend on how long we gotta let him go before he dies. So we're gonna continue to play our cards right, forgive my not great shooting, and we're gonna recover this deer. All right, we reviewed the footage, consulted deer cast track, gave it an hour. We're fairly certain because of the onside hit, he's dead. We're just gonna follow the blood trail here and sh should go hopefully right to him. I don't think he went far. We just shot him over that hill about 100 yards probably. So he made it this far, but he's just gotta be here close. Blood. See blood? Blood. Oh, what? You see that? Corey, Corey. I think that's him right yep. there. Antler tips. Ha <laughs> ha! Waiter. Oh, yeah. Corey. That one might Bam. surprise us. They always do. They're Look, grounded. Uh, he's uh, definitely sticking up above the weeds. Wow, guys. <laughs> Congratulations. Dude, that's awesome. Nice job. Wow. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, he didn't go nowhere, literally, just over the hump. Yeah. Right where I lost him. He didn't even go from where we last saw him. Hey, well, you there's a fence right there, so. You literally went through everything, though. Plus, I'm pretty sure the arrow's still yeah. through yeah, everything. Really like a yeah. Yeah. Wow, look at the mass on that bad boy, man. Yeah, he's awesome. Wow. Awesome. Wow. Wow. Like it's a perfect shot. Look at that right. thing. Lift him up. Nice. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh boy. Mass. We got a massive one. Nice. Thank you, Wade. Thank you, Corey. Alberta Muley's stick and string at its finest. And what a refresher course it's been. Gosh, this is awesome, guys. Awesome. Let's set him up. Mule deer madness at its finest. The goal is simply stated, but to, ever, to, to be able to accomplish it is a very complex process. And it is, you're trying to whittle this beautiful province down to stick, stick and string range. And what we've learned over the last 15 plus years hunting with Corey are quite a few things. The tactics we employed in this hunt were again, simple, but, but you have to execute them. You've gotta have the right guide. Corey's got the biggest mule deer literally in the Milky Way galaxy. You gotta have the right gear. You've gotta have a bow and arrow and setup and situation that we've got from Matthews that'll kill a deer at 50, 60 yards. And then you've gotta employ the other tactics I talked about, which is we had a 15 to 20 mile an hour wind today and we feel like the magic circle on these mule deer are 45 to 60 yards. We pushed the envelope, got to 50 in this just beautiful pasture. You know, it's six to eight inches tall and we got to 50 yards of this bedded muley and he stood up, wades on him beautifully. I draw back, the arrow finds us mark. He doesn't go um, 300 yards and, and piled up here. And we couldn't be happier hunters. Opening day, September 1st, 2022. You've got to love it. Hopefully you enjoyed this first episode of Deer Season 23. Jared up there in Alberta, one of our favorite spots on earth, getting it done. He waited for that windy day and it worked. Contrast that with the trouble that they were having in Utah, getting close to an animal, no wind to cover that sound and a drastic difference between tactics because mother nature was playing along in one case. In another case, she made it really, really tough. Here's episode one before the year's over with, there'll probably be 40-ish or so episodes to Deer Season 23 and another 10 or so within turkey season 23. So we're going to bring it to you as fast and as real as we possibly can here at Dre Outdoors. We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DOD TV was brought to you by Leopold.